Well, we continue looking at careers, looking at jobs, maybe helping some people here in the Bay Area today do just that. Say you're in a job, though, that maybe gives you the Sunday night scaries. You dread going to work Monday morning. We're going to share some tips, or at least we're going to talk with Carson Tate, who's going to share us some tips on how you can make the most of your job and, and find things to look forward to. And if maybe you're not in that position that you've always dreamed of just yet, Carson, good morning. Welcome to the blend. Good morning, Natalie. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, again, we're trying to help those, you know, maybe, of course, looking for a job or finding that dream job is, is down the road still. Right. How do you make the most? of the position and maybe you are in that spot where Sunday night rolls around and you're like, oh, I don't wanna go back to work. What are some rules of thumb to keep the spirits up? Yeah, so I've got three simple strategies that you can use to make your work actually work for you. So the first one is to procrastinate. And I know we've all been told procrastination is a dirty word. However, it is not because procrastination is actually pretty informative and it helps you call your to-do list. So if you're thinking about on Sunday night, that long to-do list and all of it is just kind of ugh, look at it. And when you feel like you don't want to do something on your list, there are a couple of questions I want you to ask yourself. Will this task help me achieve a strategic goal for my organization or help me advance my career? If so, we're going to keep it. Does this task drive revenue? If it doesn't, we're going to need to think about letting it go. And then the third question I want you to ask yourself is, does this task or this project really allow me to showcase and highlight my signature strengths, skills, and experiences? If so, you keep it. But if it does not answer yes to any of these questions, let it go guilt free. I would say that's making me nervous. I mean, I know I'm a to-do list kind of person, but just letting it go, wouldn't there be some ramifications that you need to consider? Or how do you keep a positive that you're able to just focus on it after you've gone through that checklist? Yes, yeah, so great point. Um, and I've never met a task list I didn't like either, Natalie. Love a to-do list. <laughs> and so when you think about letting it go, some of these tasks are tasks that you've taken on that you don't need to have a conversation with someone about. But to your point, great point, some of them you do need to have a conversation with your manager. And in that conversation with your manager, what I suggest that you do is talk about the task and how it is not helping you achieve the company's goals, the team's goals, driving revenue, and really highlighting your skills. And when you let this task go, we're going to do more of the tasks that drive revenue are strategic and really highlight the best of who you are. You want to make it easy for your manager to say yes. In the previous segment that we've had here on the show talking about careers, the employee has more power than they sometimes give themselves. And that seems to go hand in hand with your message right there. Speaking up if you think something doesn't sue you, which would make it a little more enjoyable of a work atmosphere, right? Absolutely. And I've been saying for months now that our employers, our managers and bosses are not psychic. They can't read our minds. They can't know what is the highest and best use, oftentimes of our strengths and skills and how we need to work. So in coming to them and making a very specific ask that is clearly mutual, mutually beneficial to you and to them, it's really a powerful opportunity to start to shape your work so you can be happier. And I know one of the keys to and, and getting to know you a little bit, you don't have to rely on coworkers, don't rely on your boss, don't rely on these outside forces to find that happiness and that job fulfillment. Absolutely. Yeah. Think about your task list, call it. I'm also going to suggest do the hard work. I know that sounds a little counterintuitive to find your own happiness, but what we want to find is that tension between too easy and too hard. So if your work has gotten too easy, where's an opportunity to stretch, grow, advance your skills, talk to someone that might make you think differently? Because in that flow state, Dr. Martin Spellman, who is the father of positive psychology, says it's one of the key things to being happier and happier at work. So find that harder work to do. Carson, I'm so glad to meet you today. And of course, Carson has a book, Own It, Love It, Make It Work. Carson takes the website if you have any more questions. Thanks for being with us today. Thanks, Natalie. I appreciate it.